Good morning and welcome to worship today. Let us join together as the people of God gathered yet apart. Wherever we come from, whatever burdens we carry, we lay down at the feet of our risen Lord and we rejoice to be in his presence now. Let us pray. Eternal God, amidst the confusion of the world, we look to what is constant. In you we find our hope and our strength. In you we see the road we need to follow. Even though our hearts may sometimes be conflicted between your plan and the easier options of the world, we look to your promise. We look beyond what is groundless and fleeting. In you we trust. In you we hope, in your hands we put our future, grounded in faith, secure in purpose, and sound by your ceaseless love. Forgive us for the times the fleeting has held our interest. Forgive us for the times we have been attracted to the easier option. Forgive us when the beat of the world's tune has led us away from you. Forgive us and restore us by your mercy and grace. Amen. Our Gospel reading is John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by, be by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two appearances. Two snapshots of events some days apart and two very different reactions. The fourth gospel is my favourite, but I can't help but think there is a great deal of emotion in this account which has been edited out, which hasn't made the final cut, probably because it doesn't form part of the writer's planned presentation and the desire to control the account handed on to those awaiting the story of Jesus' ministry. I cannot help but contrast the total fear that must have been felt at Jesus' appearance with his words, Peace be with you. Anything less peaceful at that time would be hard to imagine. Think of his followers. They were grieving and scared, but they were also without a plan. For the duration of Jesus' earthly ministry, their lives had followed his leadership, his decision, his instruction. Now that had gone as well. What did their future hold? Like many clergy, I should not be here today, not leading an act of worship. 
the week following Easter Day is traditionally a clergy holiday week. But this year has seen that effectively cancelled, not just because we cannot go anywhere, but rather because taking the idea, taking a week off at this time, seems wrong. So here I am. And I confess that one of the things that I am missing right now is seeing blank pages in what is usually a rather large and messy diary. My diary tells me the who, the when and the where what I'm doing, where I need to be, what church I'm leading worship I'm. But what has been written for these weeks has been cancelled. And now blank pages remind me that all plans are on hold indefinitely as we continue in this limbo called lockdown. However, unlike Jesus' disciples, I know that this is only for a short time. And when the pages fill up once again, I will be glad to have that structure and complain about it. But for the disciples, that sense of direction had gone forever. And so the appearance of Jesus and his words of instruction gave them hope and a purpose. But for one who only heard of this at second hand, it wasn't enough. Thomas wanted actual proof before he would accept what he'd been told. Throughout this gospel, the focus goes from one individual to another. As the disciples missed out on Jesus' appearance to Mary in the garden, now Thomas has been excluded from this appearance. And he needs to witness Jesus' resurrection and appearance for the continuation of his faith like the others, to know that the resurrection is as real as the crucifixion. And when he gets that, his words show his belief, my Lord and my God. The peace of Jesus is both disruptive and reassuring. It begins a new way of life and gives his disciples a new authority and responsibility to go out and be witnesses. They are now released from the trauma of what they have witnessed. Not that they will ever forget it, but now the great themes of hope and joy come into play. That same Easter joy that we need to sustain us at difficult times as well as easy times. And the spirit of peace which provides us with the reset button when our rhythm of life is disrupted. Peace be with you. Let your heart make real the peace that we proclaim. Let us know the meaning of the peace Jesus offers, the peace only he can give. Amen. Our prayers of intercession today are based around the prayer of Teresa of Avila. Let us pray. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. As the body of Christ, we pray for unity in the face of division. As the body of Christ, we pray for strength for each other in the face of this pandemic. Yours are the only hands with which he can do his work. As the body of Christ, we pray for all who exercise the work of care and compassion to those who are ill, to those whose life is ending for all caregivers, in whatever form that takes. Yours are the only feet with which you can go about the world. As the body of Christ, we pray for the unseen heroes who are keeping our country working, and for the army of volunteers whose small actions are making a massive difference. Yours are the only eyes through which his compassion can shine forth upon a troubled world. As the body of Christ, we pray for all continued witness, recognising its need is greater now than it has been for many decades. Understanding, appreciating and accepting our future witness may take a different form. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. We say together the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Peace be with you. Let the peace of the risen Christ be real to you. Let the hope of the risen Christ live in your hearts. Let the love of the risen Christ remain with you. Today, forever. Amen. Until we meet again, may peace, hope, love and grace surround you. Amen. <laughs>